Hello and welcome to this section of the TI-89 Calculator Tutor. Here we are going to solve some differential equations, but in this case we're going to actually supply the initial conditions. Uh, and the calculator is basically going to find that general solution and then it's going to apply those initial conditions to find the value of those constants. And so we're going to get the, uh, the actual solution, uh, the, the specific solution, uh, which uh, is basically corresponding to our initial conditions. So let's go off in the calculus menu and go and put DE solve on there. Now first before we do anything with initial conditions I want to type a differential equation in without the initial condition so we can see what the answer is and we'll see how it changes when we add an initial condition. So let's do something like 3 times uh, y, uh, let's, do, let's do a first uh, order, y prime uh, plus let's do uh, 9 times y and let's make it easy, make it equal to 0. So comma x comma y. This is all what we did in the last section. This is a differential equation. 3 times first derivative of y with respect to x plus 9y is equal to 0. x is independent, y is a dependent variable. So we hit enter and we have a, uh, an answer here. We have a constant. Don't worry about the fact that there is an 18 here. That's just because um, I was solving some differential equations a minute ago and it increments this constant. But this is a constant times this exponential. All right, now let's make a change. Let's say we have an initial condition. Recall, since we only have a first derivative, you only need one initial condition to lock this constant down. If it were a second order, you would need two initial conditions, and so on. So what you do, let me go ahead and backspace over this. So we put DE solve on the stack, and we've just typed our equation in. So you don't put a comma, you don't do anything else. You need to put the word AND there. Let me show you how to do that. We'll come back and explain everything in a minute, but you need to put the word AND there. So go to the math menu, test, section 8 is a test. This is where you have your greater than, less than, equal to. Well, there's also an AND there. You'll understand in a second. So we have this differential equation AND we have to put our initial condition. So our initial condition, let's say Y at 0 is equal to 1. So we put Y at 0 is equal to 1. This is exactly how you would see it written in a textbook. Um, y is a function of x, don't forget. So we're saying basically at x is equal to 0, y is equal to 1. That is our initial condition. It's specifying how the system's starting out. We only need one of them because it's only a first order system. So after we put that in there, we put comma x comma y and close the guy off. All right, now don't forget what we've done up above is the general solution. Right, So once we specify this initial condition, we should see something that looks just like this, but this constant out front will be a number now. So let's go ahead and hit enter. So what we got here is e to the negative 3x, which matches this, and there's nothing out in front, so that means the constant out here is a 1. So it solved our differential equation, and, it, and the constant that it found was just equal to 1 in this particular case. So look at what we've written down here. We have the differential equation. We had to put the word AND there. Y evaluated at x is equal to 0 is equal to 1. Now if we go and change this, what if out, instead of equal to 1, what if we make it equal to 7? That's an initial condition. When x is equal to 0, y is equal to 7. So we hit enter again. Now the constant that's out in front becomes a 7. What if we change it even more? What if our initial condition is saying, uh, okay, Y evaluated uh, when X is equal to 4 uh, is equal to, you know, 5, something like this. So it doesn't have to be X is equal to 0. Your initial condition can specify any point. When X is equal to 4, Y is equal to 5. So we hit enter, and our constant is a little bit different here. So we've got 5, to, now we have E to the 12th, you see. Uh, so we, the e to the 12th is just a number, so it's changed the, the solution just a little bit more. So we've locked down our constant. It's a little more complicated now because what we typed in as our initial condition was a little bit more complicated. Usually your initial conditions are evaluated at, at x is equal to 0, but you can type in anything you like. So that is how you, in a nutshell, uh, solve a differential equation with uh, coefficients and with the, an initial condition. So let's go and do one more. Let me just show you quickly how to do this when you have a second order differential equation. So let's go and type a second order differential equation. We'll do y double prime uh, plus let's say 6 times y prime uh, plus 3 times y let's say 
uh, equal to, so on the right hand side we'll just put a zero here, comma x because it's the independent variable, comma y because it's dependent, close parentheses. So what we have is the second derivative of y with respect to x plus six times the first derivative plus three times the function itself y is equal to zero. So that's what we get. Let's see what we get here. When we get an answer it looks a little bit gnarly. We have a constant here and we have a constant here. We have an exponential with e and up here is just a number times x. So don't don't get too worried about it. The negative square root of 6 minus 3 that's just a number uh, times x and if we go and look and see what else we got we have a constant over here times another exponential uh, with a constant up here times x. So it looks a little bit ugly at first but don't forget the calculator is trying to keep everything exact. That's really what's going on here and that's the reason why it looks that way. So the bottom line is we have a constant times an exponential plus a constant times an exponential. Alright, so let's go edit our command down here and I'll just take this out to make it clear. So this is our differential equation we typed in and we're not going to hit a comma or anything. We're going to hit second function math to go into the test and hit and. That's the, that's the thing that keys it and tells it here's your equation and by the way here are some initial conditions. Now since this is a second order differential equation we need to have two initial conditions. So let's specify the first one. y prime at 0 is equal to 1. Okay so this is the first derivative evaluated at 0 is equal to 1. Let's do another and. Second function math 8, 8 and here's another one, y at 0 is equal to 4, let's say. So we have two initial conditions. We type our equation in the tail end of it here, and y prime at 0 is equal to something, and y at 0 is equal to something. This is just like you would see it written in a book, comma x, comma y. We should get a form of a solution like this with some constants in the place. So let's see what, what happens here. So what we get, thanks for a little while, now look at what we have. We have a giant constant out here basically, 2 minus 13 squared to 6 over 12, but we still have e to the constant up here times x, which is what we had here. So this constant right here is just basically what this, is, this thing is here. We go up, scroll over to the right, and we'll see that we have something similar over here. We have a constant basically sitting out in front here, and then we have an exponential uh, with a e to the constant x right here. So basically it, it found exactly what we wanted it to find. It's just that um, you know it looks a little bit gnarly. Now the calculator is trying to keep everything in exact form. So if you want to just get some decimals out there don't forget you have the power of the squiggly equals. So just go ahead and hit green squiggly equals. It'll calculate again and it'll give us the differential equation in a little bit more digestible format. Here is 4.65 and some change times this number raised to the power of x and over here we have 0.65 times this number raised to the power of x. Now again just be careful this calculator is going to give you answers in ways that you may not simplify it yourself. When we did the squiggly equal it, it kind of put the answer down in decimal form in a way that you may not write it down yourself but suffice to say is that it is equal to what we had before. So that's basically it when we do differential equations with initial conditions. You type it in just like you did before. You have to put the and and then you literally type in the initial conditions just like you would see in a textbook. If it's a first order you only need one initial condition so it's pretty simple. If it's a second order you need two initial conditions. So like we did in this case we'll do uh, an and two times. So we'll say and y prime is at zero is equal to something and y at zero is equal to something comma x comma y at the end. And so it's something important for you to play around with and make sure you know how to, to do. Solving these differential equations by hand is a bear. The calculator cannot do all of these guys and, and, and certainly it has a lot of limitations, but it is nice to know that this function exists because in the beginning of differential equations it's very important that you get confidence. So definitely check your work. If you have a few minutes left on an exam, by all means pop it in here. I would not lean on this as a crutch to solve your, your problems because a lot of times it won't be able to solve it or it'll give you goofy answers that look a little weird. Uh, they're correct, they're just different than you would do yourself so you're not gonna, you're gonna have a hard time seeing if you're right if it gives you answers like that. So use it when it's appropriate. The only way you can know that is if you play with it. So get a book out, type in some of the problems out of your book, see what it spits back at you and just understand the power of your calculator so that you can use it 
uh, in an appropriate fashion on your quizzes and on your tests.